and just problems there. Are we? Sorry, didn't didn't catch that. Do you want to repeat the question? Frozen. Yeah. Paul Fantasy, do you want to jump in? Yeah, sure. Um, Connor, you recently completed your move to the Grasshoppers. Could you tell us a bit about how, how that came about, first of all? Yeah, so obviously I'd gone back to Wolves for um, pre season, and I kind of knew that obviously the idea for me and the plan for me was to go back out on loan. So, um, I was just training back at Wolves in pre-season, just kind of waiting to see what came about off the back of what we see the Blackpool on last season. And uh, I had a little bit of interest, obviously, in England, but with um, like the wage cap coming in and things like that, it, it, it was just staying at interest and I didn't really have anything concrete. And my idea, obviously, before going back in was to kind of get out as early as possible and get, get with whichever team I was going to be going to and get out there early and get to know the lads and before the season started and then uh, it was Wolves that obviously mentioned the grasshopper thing and it was like straight away like a concrete offer and I'd, I'd spoke to the manager and kind of knew his plans straight away and it, it was the only thing I had so early on so I kind of just jumped at it really and went went ahead with it and um, went out there obviously got got a little injury and that, that kind of halted the progress that I would have wanted to make but, but back from that now and everything kind of seems to be progressing nicely yeah how, how, have you, how have you found it so far over there have you played any games or anything like that or does the injury prevent that from yeah so so i went over and kind of picked up the injury in my first pre-season game without without knowing about it i had a little bit of uh, pain in my knee after the game but didn't really think anything of it and it was kind of ongoing so it was then that i decided to go for a scan with it and I had a slight tear in uh, my LCL ligament which kept me out for four to five weeks but I've been back to full training now maybe two and a half weeks two weeks and uh, got 45 minutes in a league game before I come out here which was obviously something that I was looking to do before I came you know have that that kind of match fitness and it, some sort of minutes under my belt before I came to kind of put me in contention to get some minutes with the with the team over here as well. Yeah, and obviously it's always kind of well documented that not too many Irish players go and play kind of beyond uh, Britain, whereas this this isn't the first time you've gone abroad. Do you feel like, do, do you enjoy kind of challenge with your style to play kind of so yeah, the, the British game? So did, did you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think, I think obviously going out to Slovakia kind of stood me in in good stead for whatever whatever's kind of going to come my way within my career. My career because um, going out there was kind of my first experience of playing week in week out at men's football, and obviously being away from Britain, it kind of gave me that mindset of if I have to do that again, I'm willing to do it because obviously I'd, I'd done it. I'd done it so young and it it had gone so well. So I think. I think whatever comes comes my way, really, whether it's going to be in England or, or whether it's abroad, I'll be ready for it. Obviously, off the back of that Slovakia thing, so I think I think it put me in a good position in terms of my mindset and my attitude towards playing abroad. And like like I said, I'm I'm kind of open to anything now and whatever whatever I think is going to ben going to benefit me most, whether it it be staying in England or, or going abroad, I'm I'm open to any of it. Sure, sure, and there's been a lot of talk recently particularly as regards the the senior team with the number 10 role and maybe the the lack of obvious candidates who could play as a number 10 and, and that's obviously somewhere that you're comfortable playing like do, do you is would you say say that's your favorite role and somewhere that you feel you could pro probably or potentially fill in for the senior team in the future yeah yeah definitely i think I think for all the clubs I've played for, my, my roles kind of always change between 10, 8. I've played out on the left-hand side a little bit, but it's been quite consistent with Ireland that I've always kind of played as a number 10 and I've never really played out of that position. I've played the odd game in maybe the number 8, but 
but throughout all the ages from 17s all the way through to 21s I've consistently played as a number 10 so I'd like to think that you know I'm that's my most comfortable position and especially when playing for Ireland as well. Sure and and just finally for me um, what would qualification mean to you to, to qualify for the Euros? It would be a massive achievement wouldn't it? Yeah obviously it'd be massive I think I think it's very yeah, how big of achievement it would have been because of how we've started and how well we've started the campaign. You know, we've just been taking it game by game, but we're kind of in that in that last home stretch now of the, the final three games. And you know, it, it's easy to forget how big of an achievement it would actually be because of how I think our mindset towards the campaign's been in terms of we're going into every game looking to win, and we're not we're not kind of approaching games looking to pick up a point in, in hope to win the next game. It's kind of just been approaching every game, looking for three points and having that confidence of beating anyone, but still keeping in the back of our mind that, that how big of an achievement it would obviously be to to reach the finals. And obviously not, not many Irish under-21 teams doing it before as well. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. Can you hear me okay, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi Connor, and um, just maybe kind of going off Paul's question a bit. Um, seeing as you have played in like, places like Slovakia and now, and now Switzerland, does that give you a personal edge, especially at like under, under twenty one international level? Um, possibly. I think I, I haven't really thought into it too much like that. I've kind of just took took the moves as they've come and kind of just focused on what how they was going to benefit me most, and I think. In terms of my own personal career, I think the options I've took and the decisions I've made to go abroad and the timing of them has probably been bit been right. Really, I think obviously the Slovakia thing was um, at the time before going. It probably didn't look like the best move for me, and that was my opinion of it. But after going there and having that success out there and playing as many games as I did, I think it it kind of put me in good stead. Like I said before, to to be open to other moves abroad and I think obviously not many not many young Irish players have have kind of done that and took took that that route abroad but you know I, I'm, I'm not going to say that everyone should should look for a law move abroad or look to move abroad it's just kind of what what's best for your personal career path and I felt that obviously in my own career and my style of football that maybe at this time, it might be a little bit more suited to abroad, but not not to say that I'm not looking to play my career in England and play at the highest level possible. Okay, yeah. Um, obviously, you've you've had a bit of time with uh, Jim Crawford as as the manager now, and you've spoken in the past about uh, your, your admiration of Stephen Kenny. Uh, we put this to, to Dare as well, but have you noticed any differences in in Jim's philosophy or how he's approaching the, the match next week? Uh, no, no, nothing, uh, nothing too too big in terms of obviously the philosophy of football. I think it it helped massively. Obviously, I've been teaming in with Stephen in the previous obviously camps and the previous games, and I think we've kind of just picked up where we left off. To be honest, obviously, there's a few the squads changed a little bit as it does throughout a full campaign. You're never going to have the same squad all the way through. So the the new players that have come in have have come straight in and we've not had any new players that haven't been in in Irish camps before so everyone's kind of gelled together and like I said I think we've kind of just picked up where we left off and we're just, we're just looking to go at the Italy game as we did the first game and go for the three points really. Good stuff and um, uh, finally just I suppose looking ahead of we would obviously you have that rapport with Stephen um, do you think it's a, a senior call-up is a possibility for you in the future and is that something that, that you aim towards? Uh, yeah, definitely. I try I try not to think too much about it, but obviously when you see see lads that you've played with at under-21 level, the likes of obviously Aaron, Troy, Adam, Jason, all the lads that have kind of made that step up, it, it does kind of creep into the back of your mind that it, it is possible and Obviously, I think first and foremost, you have to be performing at, at club level and playing week in, week out, just to kind of give yourself that chance. But yeah, like I said, my, my main focus, obviously, throughout this campaign is kind of just being on the 21s and hoping that we can qualify for the finals. But I think 
I think with the way Stephen is, and you know, he's not afraid to call up the young players. I'd be surprised if it if it went in the back of everyone's mind who's in this this twenty ones camp, knowing that if you perform well for the twenty ones and you're consistently performing at your club, then then it is a possibility. Great, thank you, Paul Lingham. Are you there? Hi, yeah, how's it going? Thanks, Gary. Go ahead. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah. Hi, Connor. How's it going? I uh, just kind of wanted to know, obviously, James came in now, but what's the kind of biggest difference between Jim and Stephen? You've obviously worked with them. Obviously, Stephen was, was the manager now, but what's Jim like as a manager now? Um, yeah, I, like, like I said before, I wouldn't say there's, there's a huge difference or anything in particular that I'd pick out. I think, like I said before, with, with Jim being a massive part of, of Stephen's uh, campaign and obviously... Where Jim's been there since the start of when Stephen came in. I think, like I said, we've kind of just picked up where we left off. And in terms of like managing styles, obviously every manager's got got different styles of how they like to do things. But it it doesn't it doesn't feel any different. The training's been fairly similar, and like I said, the, the squad changes from from camp to camp. But apart from that, it, it doesn't really feel any different, and you can still feel that confidence around the camp and that that attitude towards qualifying is still the same. And you know, sometimes managers managers change at club level and it's in a different feel around the club. But I won't say that's the case here. Obviously, I, I, yeah, I'd say the the attitude is very similar in terms of Jim and Stephen with the confidence going into games. You know, I, I, I don't think we're going to be afraid of anyone, and with there only being three games left, and we're into that last stretch of it all now. We'll look, we're going to be looking for three points in every game just to. Give us that concrete qualification. Yeah, kind of looking around the squad though, it's still a very strong squad despite players being taken into the the, the national team. Like you still have Jonathan Afalabi there, Will Smallbone, Michael Obafemi coming in. So you must be still very confident going into these games now, these final games. Yeah, definitely, and I think that's that's probably the biggest difference I felt with this with being with the twenty ones compared to all the other age groups in terms of if players do get called up or players drop out, there always seems to be another player waiting to come in and the quality isn't dropping. It's not like you're missing, you know, maybe four or five of your best players and players are coming in, the standards are dropping and things are changing. It, it, it don't feel any different. And obviously the lads that have come in, the quality is there and obviously the, the level that they're all playing at at the clubs is, is there for everyone to see. So that that's probably been the biggest difference with, there's people waiting to get in the squad and there's players that are hungry to get in the squad and it, it doesn't feel any different with with different players coming in from camp to camp. Yeah, well, just on your, your club career then, obviously you're away now with uh, Grasshopper Zurich. What, what's it been like? Have you settled in nicely? I know you got an assist there the last game you played. Yeah, it, it obviously wasn't ideal picking up the injury in that first game because... I've always felt the easiest way to settle in with a new team, obviously, especially abroad and being in Slovakia was kind of just playing football and training every day with the lads and obviously getting them pre-season games in and getting that chance to gel. But obviously, I didn't I didn't have that luxury this time around picking up that injury early on. But I got a good feel for obviously the club and obviously got, got to know the physio as well, which, which is a different, obviously, approach to how you'd normally normally en- enter a new club. So I think I think that... That gave me a, a different different mindset towards obviously the league starting and things like that, and I just wanted to kind of get get as many minutes as possible before I came came out here to give me give me a chance of obviously playing. I didn't I didn't want to come away and meet up with the squad having no minutes at all because obviously Jim's going to be looking for the fitness of players and how much to play in at the club. So I think that 45 I got just before I come away, I was really happy with. And like you said, I got the assist and it's kind of given me that confidence to come away and be in contention for a place to maybe starting might be a little bit out of reach in terms of fitness, but I'm definitely feeling good training and I put myself in contention to play a part in the game. Fantastic. Well, listen, best of luck with the rest of the games. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Thank you. OK, we're going to switch to the daily newspaper section now uh, on Kelser. Uh, how are you, Connor? Yeah, um, good, thanks. Yeah. Um, how's Zurich been like compared to, um, was it Dneska? Yeah, obviously it's a, a very different place. Uh, Slovakia was kind of my first experience of of playing abroad, so 
it the the adaptation took took a little bit longer in terms of getting used to the the things outside of football and obviously the language barrier and things like that. But it, it's definitely been a lot a lot easier in Switzerland Switzerland in terms of like I said the language barrier and outside of the club and it, it it's there's a lot more English speak, speaking people and um. That, that side of things has been fine, to be fair. Like I said, I picked up that injury fairly early, which wasn't ideal, and I would have liked to have got a few pre-season games in and got, got that chance to train with the lads before the season started. But obviously, it didn't, didn't work out like that. But in terms, of, in terms of settling in and the lifestyle and things like that, everything's been run smooth. Yeah. You got used to the cost of living over there yet? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a bit a bit dearer than where I'm from back in, back in England. But uh, yeah, it's it, it's obviously it's obviously different diff, different to what you used to. But these are things that obviously it's all part part of the experience and part of obviously learning about different places and different countries that you might end up playing in. And like, is this move like? Sometimes you think when people leave England, they're almost out of sight, out of mind. Like, do you feel that by going there? playing regularly that you're still going to be watched that you'll still be watching on Y Scout and you can progress you the way you want yeah definitely I think I think obviously first and foremost the most important thing is playing regularly at, at any level I think it, it, you could go on to any club a Champions League club a Premier League club if you're not going to play regularly you're kind of out out of that window and you're not going to get people watching if you're not playing so I think first and foremost that's the most important thing and then the level obviously is important, but but for me personally, I'm I'm confident in my ability, and I'm confident that if I do get that chance to play it um, on whatever platform, that that hopefully I can do enough to kind of stand out and you know get people watching and keep people interested. Thanks, Thanks for that. Okay, I well, know John Paul has to shoot off, so John, do you want to ask a couple of questions before you go? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Garrett. Uh, Connor, how you doing? How you doing? Yeah, just about the Italians. Uh, I know you played for an era in Italia. Like, what was your impressions of them and how the match went? Um, I, I think it went as we expected. To be fair, though, obviously, I, I think they they went into the game expecting to win the game, and I, I think we shocked them a little bit with our intensity and how high we pressed. And I don't think they was expecting it. So this game might be a little bit different in terms of they'll know what to expect from us this time early on, but. Like I said earlier, we're still going in with that with that kind of same mindset of we're not afraid of anyone. And obviously, at the start of the campaign, they would have been the top seeds in the group, and I'd imagine the favourites to kind of win the group. But like I said, I think the most important thing that we've had throughout this campaign is our mindset and our attitude towards the games and just the campaign in general. And we want to win every game, so I think it might be a different game than the first one. And Maybe a bit more open. I think I think the first game was a little bit tense in terms of the teams were just getting a feel for each other. So I think this game's kind of all or nothing. I, th- I think both teams know that a win is what is what they'll be going for. So I'd imagine it to be a little bit more open this time round. And in that context, is it an advantage that the fact that there's no fans? Because I'm sure you would have seen the fixture to start the campaign. I think we would have to go there, and it'll probably be a you know a full crowd or a good turnout and to be known as being fairly hostile. Yeah, I, I definitely see it that way because I, I know that they, I don't think they would have enjoyed coming to Tallow in, in a packed out stadium. And I, th- I think I think any little fine margins you can get on a team is, is going gonna, is gonna to help, especially against a team with with the quality like it, 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 Italy will have. And, you know, you see in the squad, there's a lot of experienced players who've played a lot of first team games at a high level. So I think, any little advantage in the fine margins can make a difference. So ho- hopefully that'll help us on the night. Yeah. And and how how would you judge your own contribution so far in the campaign? I know quickly the last game you came on and made an impact at half time. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been fairly happy with obviously how how it's gone. I think when I've when I've been fit and available, I've kind of d- done as well as I can and kind of chipped in with a few assists here and there and. It's hard sometimes because obviously the squad changes from camp to camp and obviously that means that the starting a level 11 would change and you kind of have to adapt to that every game. But when uh, when the games are as big as they are, you're kind of just running on adrenaline most of the game. And I think 
I think in terms of myself and my own performances, when, when I've been fit, I've been fairly happy with how I've played and the impact I've had on the team as well as as well as well everyone, really. I think everyone, even the lads that, you know, have, have come on here and there, everyone's played the part. And like I said, the squad changes from camp to camp, but everyone's playing the part. And even the lads that, that have come away in most camps and not, and not played, it, it, that everyone's still got that same attitude and that same mindset and that positive energy around the camp. And, and just finally, I know when you were younger, you had, you had a choice to make and, and you entered us, you entered your, your dad's side of things. Um, was this something that you envisaged at the time that you could compete you know, for qualifying for tournaments? I know you played for the 17s at the Euros, but did this getting the 21s is a, ma- a major stage. Yeah, that if, I, if I'm honest, when I was, when I was younger, my, my mindset towards football was a little bit different. I kind of just took, took everything as it came. So obviously when... When I heard about the the international interest and obviously the opportunity to play for Ireland, I, d- I didn't think too much into it in terms of competition-wise. And I, to be honest, I probably didn't even know at the time that they, they had the European competitions at underage because it was just kind of a case of taking things as they come. And I probably wasn't as educated about international football at underage as as I would have liked to have been because I didn't I didn't really look into it too much. And then when it came about, it all kind of came about quite quickly in terms of I think my first camp was in Croatia, a friendly camp, and then the next camp I got called up to was um, under 17s qualifiers, and you kind of get that feel for like European competitions and how much it means to obviously the country and how much it means to the countries that you're playing against as well. And it, it's a different experience to club football in terms of every, every match is important and it's not you might lose and it's on to the next one. You, you're looking for three points every game and every match everyone puts everything on the line so I think that's probably the biggest difference I've learned in terms of from international football to club football and like I said when I first got that call up I probably didn't think about anything like European competitions or playing up through the age groups it was just kind of all right we'll go away and uh, see how that goes and just take it from there really. All right thank you. Mark McCavin. Hey Connor. Um, yeah. I suppose not everyone takes to uh, moves abroad in the way that you've done. Uh, why do you think that is? Why has it worked out so well for you? Um, yeah, so I think with the Slovakia one, I think the style of football kind of suited me down to the ground, really, in terms of the manager and his philosophy and how he wanted to play. And I, I kind of knew a bit, a bit more about the manager before going out there, whereas with previous loans in England, I kind of... I wouldn't say I rushed into him, but I kind of got there and then found out about how how I'd be used and how the manager wanted to play. But with the Slovakia one, I had a bit more time to kind of look into it and see the style of football. And luckily, Wolves had a lad on on there already, so I got to kind of ask him a few questions about it as well. So I think I think the main thing for me is obviously, like I said, been the style of football, and it it probably seems to suit me a little bit more, and it helps me kind of settle in quicker and just kind of get that consistent run of games and give me that platform to perform as well as I can, really. And and have these moves added something to your game that you might necessarily have added uh, if you'd stayed in England or the UK? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think I think the way things are going in England, you know, I'd just before Slovakia, I'd just come off the back of a loan to Wolves, so uh, things haven't really gone as planned and I didn't play uh, as much as I would have liked. And I, I think I was always looking for that option abroad just to kind of consider it and see see if it came up and then once it did come up come up I kind of just jumped at it really and want, wanted to test myself and sit, see if it could work out abroad and I think not just on the pitch as well I've learned a lot as a person as well in terms of obviously living away from home and the main thing I say about the loans abroad that I've had is it kind of gives you that opportunity to just focus on football and that there's no, there's no distractions and there's no like sometimes it can be a good thing and sometimes it can be a bad thing but I think the loan in Slovakia was was de- definitely a good thing in terms of I was just focusing on football and going back home after training recovering eating right doing everything right you know I didn't have to worry about uh, going home seeing my mum and dad and, and things like that and it was just that that full eight and nine months of just a hundred percent focusing on football and I think that's Change me as a person and change my attitude towards football, and that I'd like to think that's shown on the pitch as well. Do you think it's given you more of an insight into how one how to unlock, say, more kind of technically minded defenses, kind of defenses you'd be coming up against with, uh, um, 
with, with Italy? Yeah, definitely. I think the majority of games I've played abroad so far, um, especially in Slovakia, obviously we, we was quite a possession-based team and a lot of the teams that we used to play, play against kind of used to sit sitting against us. So that, that kind of changed me as a footballer as well in terms of I wasn't used to playing against teams that are just sitting all the time. And, you know, a lot of the games that I played in in England, they was fairly even and you know, you'd never really get teams that just sat in from the start. So I think that, that changed me as a player in terms of getting used to playing in front of defences and, you, you know, how to kind of, like you said, unlock defences and change, change me as not always looking for the ball, but kind of making runs off the ball to getting behind defences as well. And look, finally for me, um, you've had that experience with the Under-17 European Championships. Does that give you, again, an insight into what to expect uh, and, and the kind of standard that you come up against now if you were to make it to the 21s? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, obviously the 21s is a, a level above now and, you know, you're playing against men, you know, all the games you play against are against people playing first team football regularly. So I think obviously the standard and the level is a lot higher, higher, but it's the same, same with us as well. A lot of us Obviously, since the 17s, there's still a few lads who went to them finals on this trip and you, you can see the progression that everyone's made. And I think it kind of gives us, you know, we're always speaking about, obviously, me and the lads that went, we, we chat a lot about, obviously, when, when we went away and how good it was and, you know, that we probably should have done better when we were out there. And I think that kind of gives us that, that incentive to, to get there again and kind of prove a point of doing better once we get there, if we get there. Cheers. Right, finish with Andy Fitzmaurice. Hey, Connor, good to see you again. Um, just two, two for me. Um, loans in England can, can be tricky. I think I saw a figure the other day. Chelsea have, I think, 22 players out on loan at the moment. Do, do you feel you get noticed? Do you feel that the reports get back and that what you do, what you did on loan last year and what you're doing in, in Switzerland, that it will be noticed back at the club? Uh, yeah, well, that, that's the feedback I've always, always got off the club. They have a... Uh, we have like a loans department now, which is uh, when I first went on loan to Portsmouth, that, that wasn't in place. And I've definitely noticed the difference from obviously when there's specific members of staff and specific physios that are kind of assigned to looking after loan players. And it was only yesterday I was on the phone to someone from Wolves and they're just kind of checking in and seeing how things are going. So you definitely don't get that feeling of kind of being forgotten about and you know, they're, they're ringing me after every game and asking me about the game and they've always seemed to have watched the clips or watched, watched parts of the game. So I think, like I said, that, that loan department that Wolves have brought in has helped me massively and it kind of gives you that confidence and that, that hope that you're not just going out on loan to to impress for the team that you're playing for. You're going out on loan with the, with the incentive of coming back and obviously trying to break into the first team of, of, of the club that you're on loan for. Okay, and the other one then is just on Italy. Um, I know you spoke earlier about how good they were, but just to, to maybe ask you again. I mean, since since we played them in Tala, Tonali has gone to uh, gone to Milan. A couple of players have had moves. Just just how good are they, and um, what what are the team going to need uh, to to get something against them? Um, well, I think in the first game, I think I think we did enough in the first game to win the game. I think it was a fairly even game, and we both had chances. But I think that was a game that we definitely could have won. So I think we're probably going to approach it with with a similar similar kind of game plan and definitely the, the same mindset going into the game. I know I spoke a lot about obviously the mindset that Stephen brought into the camp and that that's not changed and it and it is just that confidence and I think I think that's probably been the biggest factor of of the way the campaign's gone so far. Obviously the quality in the squad's good and that that's probably got a lot better recently but but I think the main the main factor of the success of this squad is the mindset and the confidence of going into every game and expecting to win. Thanks. Thanks, Connor. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks,